want to get a liquid from one container to a lower one, well, most people use a siphon. And it's messy. You have to put a bent tube in there and get round to the bottom end, usually, and suck. And that's pretty nasty if it's not water. But if you get the water flowing, let it drain into the lower bowl, lo and behold, your siphon's going to work. And it's going to empty this container. Well, it is messy, and it's difficult to do. And if you've got a poisonous liquid, it's really not safe. So wouldn't it be ideal if we could invent a self-starting siphon? The trouble is, that's not as easy as it sounds. If you just get the tube and plonk it in there, nothing makes the water go up over that bend, and so it just doesn't flow. At least it doesn't in a tube of uh, those dimensions, a thick tube. It does if you get a thin tube, because there we have capillarity on our side. And capillarity means that water will tend to climb up, or most liquids will tend to climb up, in a thin tube. And there they go, you see? There's the tube, and there's the water, and the water's always above the level of the water in this container. So that if I keep lowering that, you'll find it eventually gets up to the bend, flows over it, and starts the siphon. And there's one form of self-starting siphon. You can see it's draining now. But with a thin tube, it's going to take an awfully long time to drain the tumbler. And I want to do it with a thick tube, which works fast. And a thick tube won't give us capillarity. So we're back to where we started. Or are we? Not if we design the tube differently. And I'll just top up the container to show you how that works. See, this tube's of a very peculiar type. It goes up, down, up a little bit further, and then out for the siphon. What happens is that as I lower that in there, the whole thing goes under the surface of the water in the glass. As that rises up to here, it drops over the top, down round the bend, up, and with its own momentum, over the top and out. It happens very fast, so have a look at the diagram. It goes up there, down very fast, up with its momentum, and out through the siphon. At least that's the theory. Let's see how it works in practice. Here we go. Drop it under suddenly, up, down, and out. And it's flowing very fast, a self-starting siphon with no sucking. Well, that's great if you've got glass tubing and a means to bend it, but most people haven't. Fortunately, somebody makes these straws. You'll probably be able to get your hands on them. They're concertina straws, and they bend into very useful little uh, circles like that, or bends like that. And the way to join them together is to take your scissors and cut one end to a point. I'll just do this down on the desk where you can see what's happening. Down to a point like that, and then split the straw up that way. And that means that you can then poke that into another straw, and the two sides will cross over each other, and with a help from a bit of help from a fingernail or a thumbnail, you can poke one straw into the other and make a good watertight seal. And if it does happen to leak, of course you can always whack a bit of grease on it. In any event, build this and remember the rules. It's got to go up, down, up a little bit further, and out. And if you can do that, you should have a self-starting siphon. Here we go. <laughs>